Good morning, church. It is so good to see you this morning. Let's all stand and begin our worship this morning. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the rest will shine, I want a gold one, that silver services here on Sunday morning at the Rockwall and Bryn Church of Christ in Terrell, Texas. Really glad to see everybody here this morning. We especially want to welcome our, our guests. Uh, for the guests that are here with us this morning, you'll find in the pew in front of you a, a welcome card, if you will please fill that out. And whenever we take up the offering, just drop it in the, the basket. That would be wonderful. Um, somber times, right? So just make sure everybody knows it's in the bulletin to Don Burns. Um, the memorial service will be this Saturday, uh, the 18th, at uh, 1 p.m., right here at the building, and the reception to follow. You know, it's, I don't want to say much or anything, but, but um, you know, he's a great man, right? And, uh, and also, you know, Linda White lost, lost her brother. And I understand he was a, a great man, too, from the short thing I've, I've heard. You know, he was an elder. The Church of Christ in, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. It's always sad whenever we lose somebody, especially really great people. You know when you know somebody great, just like Don and didn't know uh, Linda's brother, but sounded like he was a great man too. But it's also um, a time to celebrate too and, and to be happy. That's the other side of it, right? Is that uh, you know when someone's a Christian. You know, we never know what anybody's state is, but when we know somebody is a Christian, boy, we sure can be happy. For them and almost, almost envious because they ran their race and they're with God. So that's great. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for all the many blessings that you've given us. We're especially thankful for Don Burns and the life that he lived and the legacy that he leaves behind and the, the servant that he was. So many people here knew him for so many decades and was such a pillar in this community and this congregation. And we just pray that we can honor him and uh, the best we can, Father. Father, we especially pray that you would be with his family, be with Susie, uh, be with the Ty and all and Todd and all the, the entire family, and just uh, and all of us here, especially those that were closest to him. And Father, we pray that you would be with, uh, continue to be with 
Linda White's uh, family as well as they deal with loss of uh, her brother. And Father, we, we pray that you will be with us this morning as, as we are here together to worship you. We pray that we'll have our, our minds and hearts right. Father, we know that no matter what goes on in life, so many, it's been a, a challenging quite been, you know, years and months now, Father, and uh, we just pray that whatever goes on, that you would help us to be strong, help us to be a good example for all that we come in contact with, and help us to know that we're not guaranteed the next moment. Help us to, to always be thinking about our, our eternity and, and ensuring that we have our lives in order here um, while we're on this earth in this, this short vapor um, of life in the flesh. Forgive us for our sins, Father, as we fall short. Bless this congregation, Father, and help us to, again, worship you in spirit and in truth. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to praise our Lord in the next few songs. I want you to stand, and we're going to remain standing. If you need to sit, please feel free to do so. But let's all stand, and let's praise our Lord. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way to where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. Nor the sad, nor the nor the fear where
church Jesus said do this in remembrance of me we are here today to remember his body and his blood why in the upper room did Jesus want his followers to remember why is it important to remember God said to his people to remember when you were in Egypt that I brought you out from slavery God also said to his people that when you were in the wilderness for 40 years, that I, uh, I fed you, I guided you, and I took care of you. Jesus said, for as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. His death is what Jesus wanted the followers to remember. His death was going to be such dramatic so horrible that his disciples may even forget while they, they beat him, they drug him through the street with a cross, they took nails and pierced it into his hands and his feet, placed him on a cross for six hours to die. Jesus was concerned that they may be, it may be so dramatic that they may forget. Many times we want to forget, we don't want to remember the storms that are in our lives. And when we do, it's horrible, and it's a natural thing to want to forget the storms of life. God wants us to remember that he was there with us, and he did not, that we did not stand alone. We never stand alone without Jesus Christ. So today, we remember Jesus by taking the bread and taking the cup which represents the body and the blood as a sacrifice for our sins. Jesus paid the price. And as a perfect lamb of God, 
and because you were the perfect Lamb of God, and because you paid the price, we're able to be able to live eternally in heaven. Amen. Heavenly Father, we uh, pray this morning that we will remember, we'll remember the body, the blood, the bread. We will remember that you yourself sacrificed on the cross for our sins. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. This morning, this Father, we remember the blood. Help us always to remember the fact that the blood that we are covered with forgives us of our sins. We thank you, Father, for his sacrifice, for Jesus coming and dying willingly for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God. There Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together. As we come together this morning, Father God, we, we understand and we recognize that we're the only, we're the caretakers of everything that you have given us, everything. That we own nothing. It all belongs to you, Father, and we give it to you freely, 
we ask, Father, that uh, we give back a portion of what uh, you've given us. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity of giving to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a child ages three through second grade and would like them to go to our Bible hour, we would like you to escort them at this time. I love our kids. Gotta get kids, let's go. <laughs> I love it. Let's all stand and let's sing this song before Garen brings our lesson. <laughs> On thy own glorious summit stood a numerous host redeemed by blood. Let them there seek in strange seas divine. I heard the song and strove to join. I heard the song and strove. You know, part of being family is that um, there are moments in our lives where it's time to take a, a familial pause, right? Um, for our family, that is today, 
Um, <clears throat> if you are a guest here, we're thrilled to have you. Um, but part of who we are is the, uh, the, the church that worships, that comes together on the corner of Rockwall and Bren, and what we're growing into and what we have been for many years and what we're becoming is, is, is as we learn to trust God more and more through his son Jesus Christ and the empowering Holy Spirit is that there are times where we come together and we have to take a deep breath and we have to pause. But I want to say that we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we, we, don't, we don't simply pause to, uh, to, to laugh away hurt or to laugh away sorrow or to laugh away pain or, or in, the, in the words of, of the Lion King, we simply laugh in the face of danger and that makes it all better. But we come together today and we sing the song that we sang and we partake in communion because of one ultimate truth. And we put all of our hope in this one truth. And it is this, that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the very unique Son of God. Amen. And because of that, because of that truth, though life is painful, and it's hard, and it's shocking, and it is surprising, and it even is enraging sometimes. And sometimes we don't even know what to do with it, right? Because of that, we have the true hope of eternal life. You know, this congregation has a great history it's been around a long time. There's great men that have come and gone. In my short tenure, uh, there's been two men uh, that we would probably say that are pillars of Rockwell and Brent Church of Christ. Now, please understand when I say that. They're pillars under the one great pillar, right? We understand that, okay? Right? Uh, not long after we, we got here, um, K. O. Brigham passed. Such a sweet, gracious man that I didn't know long enough. Still hear stories about K. O. And then this week, Don Burns. Two passing, two wonderful men. They passed in different ways, though, didn't they? We had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to watch KL as he slowly walked toward meeting his maker. We're all a little bit stung, stung, uh, stunned, <laughs> and shocked by the passing of Don Burns this week because it wasn't what we were expecting. But in both cases and in others that we've lost this year, our sweet Janice and others. It forces the believer, the Christian, to drive a peg in the ground and to hold 
to what is true. It forces us to open the word. If you have your Bibles, there's not going to be anything up on screens today. This um, Sometimes things happen in life that you have to pause and go away from a plan and, 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 and just, again, a familial, congregational pause. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 8. Verse 31. And I love how this section starts because I've asked this question. What then shall we say to these things? Now, Paul is talking about what just came before. But I think it broadens out where sometimes isn't that just the question that we ask? I don't understand. What then shall we say of these things that's happening right now, that's going on? What then shall we say? And then immediately, Paul doesn't leave us hanging, does he? He gives us the answer above all answers. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? And he continues on. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, here it is. No, in all things we are more than conquerors. Now, let's not miss this. Because we're all that great. Because we're just tougher than the next guy down the road. Because I've got a bigger uh, car or bank account or house. Or, or I have more friends than the next guy. I have 16,000 Facebook friends or whatever, right? No. What does it say? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? No, nothing. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
Now, I believe, and I think you do too, as Brandon said, Don believed that right now Don is experiencing the truth of that. Amen? Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Beginning in verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. There's two, two points, and I'm done. Two points, and they're brief. One, we do not mourn. The Christian, the believer, the follower of Christ does not mourn as the unbeliever. I don't know which gate the Burns family is going to meet Don. But I do know this, that Don's going to be meeting a lot of new people as Don met a lot of you new people, right? He might even push a few out of the way to shake their hand. Here's the point for each of us. Be there. Through Jesus Christ, be there. Yes, mourn. Yes, weep. Yes, hurt. It's all real, right? Be there. Now here's 
the second point. If you are not trusting Jesus Christ with your life, your love, this day is a reminder for you. This is a peg in the ground for all of us. Make your calling and your election sure. Make sure that you are of the family of God through Christ alone. Make sure, look deeply and ask the question, of, all of us should ask this question, do I really believe in Jesus? Because we are not promised our next breath. Make sure your life is right with God through Jesus Christ. That being true, make sure your life is right with those around you. Saturday at 1 o'clock we're going to have a final celebration. That's going to continue on. Right? You may have questions about what it means to be a Christian. We're not afraid of any questions. at all. We want to be those who speak the truth of Jesus Christ to all those who we come in contact with. We're going to sing a song in a moment. We call this time a song of a Song of Invitation. Um, sometimes people come down and ask for prayers. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come down and confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And in that, we do the beautiful ceremony of, of baptism, which is being immersed into the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a perfect ceremony for that, and it speaks to the truth of who Jesus is. But there's another time of invitation that happens and I believe it happens in every heart, during every service even mine it's a time of introspection and thinking about what we just talked about, do I believe have I put my faith, my hope my trust in Jesus Christ and I would ask you to do that today We can't say this enough. You know, I love you, sweet people. I love you. It is a blessing to be a part of the body of Christ, is it not? Let's pray. Father God, this morning as we have paused to, to just look at your promises during this uh, this shocking passing of our brother Don. And Father, as I know right now that, uh, that, that, that Susie and Stephen and Todd and others are on the road, Father, we pray a, a, a prayer of, of protection around them. And Father, right now for the entire Burns family, we, we pray that you would hold them close, that they would know more than anything that you love them 
Father, be with us as we, in word and deed, uh, love them well. Father, help each of us to look deeply into our own hearts, our own souls, and, and think through, have we truly put our trust in Jesus Christ? Father, as we go through the next hours, the next weeks, the next uh, uh, days, Father, help us to learn to trust you even more. Help us to see those that you place in front of us with love, with compassion, with the gospel in word and in deed. But most of all, we praise you for who you are and that you have seen us in our need. And you sent your one and only son to fulfill uh, all of our needs perfectly the greatest of which is sin and death. We love you and we praise you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Love you all. Let's all stand and sing. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and my but we were blessed with, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here safely and all the family that is on their way here safely. As we go through this week, Lord, just help us one day at a time because that's all we can do is feeble little humans, Lord, is one day at a time taking your grace in as abundant as it is, and we just cannot carry it all. Please bless us as we go forth, praising your name every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about
obrigado, Marcinho.